Welcome back. You're watching Young Turks Reloaded and we're in conversation with Vala Akshar and Dream Force till San Francisco. You know, you, you're, you're talking about Gartner and Gartner has also said that we're perhaps at that point in the cycle where expectation linked to AI have perhaps peaked. Do you believe that to be the case? That the expectations are too high? Yeah. You know, normally I would say that the hype and cycle... The market certainly seems to think so. Or... At now seems to believe that perhaps we've, we're ahead as far as the expectations are concerned. Because we're so new and a lot of companies are trying to do it themselves, uh, you know, they're not looking at the sophistication that's needed to take advantage of AI. They may not be thinking about the importance of a platform where you have the right data and the metadata and the ability to connect AI trust layer and the language model reasoning capabilities to the front office applications like sales, service, marketing, and commerce. If you're trying to stitch AI into your business, and I don't blame for businesses to thinking like that. Look, uh, October 2022, the world woke up to generative AI. Yes. OpenAI was founded in 2015, so yeah, it took eight years. A billion dollar valuation already. Already and 100 million users in 59 days. Yeah. So the fastest consumer adoption of AI. So you can understand their urgency, the excitement, boardroom discussions talking about what's this AI thing we're thinking about. <laughs> so there was pressure on CEOs, there was pressure on CIOs to bring this technology in. And I think for the last couple of years, this, this rush uh, a great uh, uh, Hall of Fame basketball coach, John Wooden, famously said, go fast, but don't hurry. I think we've gone really fast in the last couple of years, and we've learned that it is a sophisticated process. You need to have a platform mentality. You need to have an ecosystem mentality. You have to have training your stakeholders, your employees and customers, uh, infrastructure and mentality. So this is what we're trying to show today. I don't think it's hype. Uh, again, I have the privilege of being in R&D labs yeah. where I see this uh, evolution of technology and it's magic. It's, it's stunning how fast we're bringing um, automation and intelligence in the flow of work. So whether you're a sales professional or marketing or customer service, as you're servicing your customer, you're doing at a level where an average marketeer is now an extraordinary marketeer. An average sales professional is now doing extraordinary sales. In our company, we believe our developers have gained a 30% productivity increase. We believe our engineers at Salesforce are producing apps five times faster than before. And we are introducing millions of lines of code into our system that's being generated with agents and our human developers together. It's, it's extraordinary. <laughs> well, well, speaking of things that are extraordinary, uh, you know, Vala, you, you talk about what companies will need to do to continue to be relevant, to continue to be agile in an AI world. What worries you about uh, the, the, you know, making that transition to ensure that they do in fact deliver on relevance, do deliver on agility and nimbleness? What do you believe uh, CEOs are not doing enough of today that they should be? You know, uh, I, I, I have a fortune of uh, working at a company with an incredible pioneer and a CEO who has an incredible active listening muscle and habits. Uh, you know, we, we travel around the globe listening to our customers so that we can have a message that can resonate with the millions who are watching and tens of thousands who are going to spend this week with us. It's in incredibly important for us to to, to again, have that learning culture, uh, you know, that adaptive culture. And it comes from really caring about your customers and, and knowing the job to be done. We're not chasing shiny technology. We're trying to find how can we deliver value at the speed of need. I think this is how companies will stay relevant. The world is hyper-connected, knowledge sharing, and more decentralized. And so technology will fuel an incredible future for us. 
I think about India, uh, the fact that there's 627 million mobile phone users, twice the size of the US population. Yeah. I think about 90% of India covered with 5G technology. Every 10 seconds, a new sit three, three new citizens are connecting to the, to the internet. So when we talk about, for example, investing in India, where we're gonna have a billion workforce by 2030, this is the reason why ecosystems matter. If you're a CEO and you wanna grow your business and you wanna deliver value, you have to think about an inclusive strategy that includes geographies outside of just your hometown. And you also have to think about technology partners that can teach you. Again, what we can learn from NVIDIA, what we can learn from Google, what we can learn from Amazon, all these frontier AI companies that we're investing in, Anthropic and others who are here. Yeah. That's, that, 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 that's how we're going to stay relevant. I mean, if you look at the growth trajectory of my company, we've been on a rocket ship for 25 years. How do we maintain that relevance and momentum? And we're going to do that as a team sport. You know, you talked about learning from other companies. Jensen was here uh, speaking uh, yeah. at Dreamforce as well. What's been the big learning from the way that he's been running NVIDIA and from NVIDIA itself? I, uh, personally, my, my learning from him is long-term thinking and planning and conviction. The fact that he informs uh, young entrepreneurs that resilience matters, uh, you know, character is shaped through struggle. And he's had incredible struggle. Uh, you know, he's talked about his personal struggle. Um, and also his commitment and conviction to research. When he was talking to Mark, talking about researching the power of language models a decade ago. So someone who is well-read, someone who anticipates outcomes, and someone who values resilience. I love all of that. It, it, it's, it's just a privilege for a company like ours to be able to partner with him to, to, you know, to, to take our 150,000 customers on a journey that hopefully is a beautiful, rewarding one in the many years to come. What would your advice be to young entrepreneurs who are looking at starting up at this point in time, who are looking at scaling? What would you tell them? That's a great question. Um, well, I certainly want them to deliberately identify silos in their thinking. Uh, it's, and it could be a simple question as an entrepreneur, how are you helping your community grow? That's what I want entrepreneurs to think about. How are you helping bring value to your customers and, and to your employees? And I think in order to do that, I want young uh, entrepreneurs to think more like chefs than, uh, uh, than cooks. Um, when you're a cook, uh, you follow a recipe and you create a delicious meal. Now, if that recipe is gone, you may not be able to create that delicious meal. Or if a new ingredient comes to market, and I would consider generative AI a new ingredient. Mm -hmm. In the last 15 years, cloud and mobile and social and internet of things and blockchain and 3D printing and quantum computing, there are so many new ingredients. And if entrepreneurs are trained like cooks, these new ingredients may not allow them to create more beautiful meals. We are learning and trying to become better chefs, not better cooks. That's what I want entrepreneurs to do. Aspire to be a great chef, not a great cook. Salah Shah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. As you mark your 25th year, the sales for CNBC TV 18 turns 25 this year as well. So it's a happy coincidence and uh, we wish you the very best of luck and we look forward to seeing you in India. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. With that, this time for us to wrap up this edition of Young Techs Reloaded for one of us here on the team. For now, goodbye and thanks for watching. Uh,